Alongside the Criterium du Dauphiné, the Tour de Suisse is the other big warm-up race ahead of the Tour de France in July, but it's also a prestigious race in its own right, and this year is actually the 80th running of it. Yep, started all the way back in 1933. Four years were missed during the Second World War, but this race is one day longer than its French counterpart, and it starts a week later, which means that at the end of it, the riders will only have two weeks to rest and recover before their rendezvous in July. Yeah. Which I see that you're preparing for as well, Simon. Oh, yeah. A bit less arduous than the Tour de Suisse, this. Now, the race will feature a prologue, a time trial, two sprint stages, a hilly circuit stage, and no fewer than four mountain stages. It's going to be 1,229 kilometres long, and you'll be interested to know it runs from the 11th to the 19th of June. Mm. Now, I know the question that everyone wants the answer to. When do the big mountains start? Well, the answer is already on stage four. Now that goes over the Furka Pass earlier on, which peaked at over 2,400 meters. Then there's an 11 and a half kilometer mountaintop finish up to Kari, which will surely be the first of the GC shakedowns. The climbing fun continues the next day with another mountaintop finish up to Amden, but it's stage seven, which is really going to separate the men from the boys. That has a mountaintop finish up to Solden, which peaks at just under 2,700 meters above sea level. And actually, it was a finish that was also used in last year's race on a stage that was won by Thibaut Pino. Yep, and then the shortish time trial followed by another punchy mountain stage conclude the race. But who are going to be the contenders now? Mm, well, let's take a look. Let's take a look. One of the big favourites for the 6.4 kilometre prologue around the streets of Bar, but also the 16.4 kilometre time trial on the penultimate stage is going to be local hero Fabian Cancellara. Now, he actually won the prologue of the Tour of Switzerland three times in succession from 2009 to 2011. And don't forget, this year is also going to be his last outing at this race before he retires. Yeah, incredibly, actually. He also won the overall classification back in 2009, yeah. albeit on a far less mountainous route. Now, the rider who put an end to that winning streak of Cancellara was none other than Peter Sagan in the prologue. So he, once again, will uh, fancy his chances of donning the leader's yeah. jersey at the end of the prologue, if not then, at least at the end of the first road stage the following day. Yeah, but one of his key rivals is gonna be Michael Matthews of Oracle Greenedge. Now, don't forget, he surprised everyone, including, well, actually, no, probably excluding himself, by winning the prologue at Paris Nice, which was actually his first race of the year. Yeah, that was a very, very impressive ride. Yeah. Now, a few more names who will be up there on the opening prologue include Britain's Alex Dowsett. We've also got Matthias Brendley and also Mathieu Bodnar. They'll all hope to take the first leader's jersey. But what about the sprinters? Well, like the Dauphiné, the Tour de Suisse has failed to attract the big three. So no Kittel, no Cavendish and no Greipel. But Peter Sagan, obviously, is going to be up there, as is the aforementioned Michael Matthews, Danny Van Poppel of Team Sky, and then his teammate, Ben Swift, as well. Yeah, but the rider we are most looking forward to seeing in the big sprint finishes is the young Colombian of Etics Quickstep, Fernando Gaviria. Yeah. Now, it has to be said, he has spent quite a lot of time on the board recently on his run-up to the Rio Olympics, where he'll be taking place, taking part, should I say, in the Omnium. But he did the same thing back in March at the World Track Championships, and that didn't seem to affect his form a week later at Terreno Adriatico. So what about the overall contenders then? Well, TJ Van Garderen of BMC makes his first appearance at the race since 2013. He normally favours the Dauphiné. Now, he hasn't had the best of seasons this year so far, certainly not by his own standards. And a win here will do an awful lot to boost his confidence ahead of the Tour de France. Not least because teammate Richie Port is currently doing pretty well at the Dauphiné. Yeah, he wants to make sure that he's at least one of the leaders at the Tour de France. But incredibly for TJ, he's never won an overall classification at a race in Europe. No. Been close, but this could be the race where yeah, he breaks flat. that duck. Uh, now, last year's biggest disappointment really was for Geraint Thomas, mm -hmm. who finished second just. Now, he did get over that disappointment, performing very well at the Tour de France, but he will look to make the win this year. The person that pipped him last year was Simon Spielak of Team Katusha, who for some reason seems to perform extremely well on Swiss roads, so the Tour de Suisse and the Tour de Romandy as well. Mm. Another rider with a penchant for Switzerland is the Portuguese rider Rui Costa, former world champion and three-time winner 
of the Tour of Switzerland, so he'll be one to watch. Lotto NL Jumbo are bringing two hitters. They've got Wilco Kelderman and Robert Hessink, and then also John Alpsin are going to be bringing Warren Bargui. Yeah, he's looked pretty good after coming back from that crash, hasn't yeah. he? Now, for two outsider names to look at, look no further than, firstly, Miguel Angel Lopez of Team Astana. Now, he, back in the day, won Tour de l'Avenir, which is a great predictor of future performance in the mountains normally. And he's also known as Superman. What? Yeah. Superman is his nickname. How do you get a nickname like Superman? I don't know, but having got that, got that nickname, there's no doubt that he's on the cusp of taking a very big stage race win in Europe. The other lesser known name to look out for is Jon Izagira of Team Mobistar. Now, he normally plays second fiddle to the likes of Naira Quintana and Alejandro Valverde, but with both of those riders absent here, he'll have a chance to build on the third place that he got at the Tour of Romandy whilst helping Naira Quintana to victory. Yeah. Now, Dan. You know what it's time for? Predictions? Prediction time. Geraint Thomas. Really? Yeah, he was very, very close last year. This year he's focusing his efforts on stage races more than the classics, and I think he's going to go one better. Good shout. I am going for Rui Costa. Now there is a man with an amazing track record at this race, and I just can't help but think that maybe he's got another one in him as well. Mm. Bold prediction. Well, yeah. Well, not that bold. Geraint's never won it before. Rui's won it three times on the trot. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to see Fabian Cancellara's Trek Madon, which we took a look at in Dubai earlier on this year, you can find that by clicking just up there. Yeah, or to hear from Geraint Thomas when he was doing some aerodynamic testing with his team earlier in the year, then click just down there. And subscribe, click on the globe.